Today, I am presenting a case of 48-year-old male presented to ER with alleged history of skid and fall from bike 30 minutes before reaching to our ER, sustained injury to face. On initial 10-second assessment, airway was patent, patient was able to talk and complete one full sentence, but he had difficulty in opening mouth completely. There was no pulling of secretions or any oral bleeding. Uh, C-spine was maintained with C-collar from our hospital. Coming to breathing, saturation was 96% by room air, respiratory rate was 18 per minute, air entry bilaterally equal. Coming to circulation, BP was 130 bar 70 millimeters of mercury, pulse rate was 100 per minute, all peripheral pulsations equally felt. Coming to disability, GCS was 15 by 15, pupils equal and reacting to right, light. Uh, he was having complaint over bilateral preauricular area and the pain score was 7 by 10, so initially we uh, managed with injection PCM 1 gram IV stat. Coming to exposure, there was left ear bleed and uh, laceration over the chin, which is 4 into 1.5 into 3 centimeters. Coming the chin over the chin is <coughs> center. Yeah. center. Coming to history, a 48 year old male with no known comorbidities presented to ER with alleged history of RTA, skid and fall from bike. He was helmeted rider, he fell on his face from the bike. There is no history of any LOC, vomiting, or seizures. He himself removed his helmet and onlookers took the patient to the ER. He also had complaint of pain over the left shoulder and back and also the uh, bilateral preauricular area. Coming to secondary survey, uh, on head examination, eyes, there was mild bruise over the left eye, no visual disturbances was noted, eye movements were normal, no subconjunctival hemorrhage or no deformity noted. Uh, coming to nose, there was no epistaxis or any deformities. Uh, there was a lacerated wound over the chin, 4 into 1.5 into 3 into centimeter. And there were no crepitus over the sinuses. Coming to temporomandibular joint, pain on palpation of bilateral temporomandibular re joint region was there. Pain noted during mouth opening and he was uh, unable to open the mouth completely. Coming to ear, left ear so bleed. One uh, very important thing in uh, when you palpate the preauricular region, you should also check for movement, movement of the joint. So, if the joint is not moving, we can assume that there could be a condylar fracture. So, that's one thing. Apart from tenderness, also try to appreciate the movement. So, when you palpate the preauricular region, ask the patient to open his or her mouth and just try to appreciate the movement, movement of the condyle moving forward. Uh, one more very important thing is to check the occlusion. Also, check the bite of the patient. Uh, it's something not very common i think mostly the maxillofacial surgeon comes and checks but that is a very important indication or uh, that tells whether you know there could be a fracture because if there is any mal occlusion there is a chance that there could be a mandibular fracture uh, coming to ear left. and especially when you see a lower uh, yes. sorry to interrupt yes. uh, when when whenever you see a laceration on the chin you should suspect a bilateral condylar fracture because our mandible is like a pretzel bagel it's like a bread like uh, there's a bread it's it's compared to a pretzel bagel so if there is any cut anywhere or any fracture anywhere you should look for the other side also it's all connected so especially when you have a trauma on the chin the effect goes on to your condyles so this is a perfect uh, scenario like you have uh, I, I don't think the patient has a fracture here, but a fracture on the symphysis, but on the condyles, it is there. Uh, coming to ear, there was left ear bleed and ear plug was kept. Uh, on zygoma, there was no deformity, no tenderness over the cheek. Uh, intraoral examination, mouth opening was limited and he was able to close mouth but painful. Maxilla and mandible were stable. Uh, coming to C-spine, it was maintained with C-collar. Uh, since he is having a facial trauma, we uh, uh, initially had put a C-collar. Neck, there was no, uh, there was mild neck tenderness over the bilateral side, no swelling or bruises. Chest, uh, left shoulder movements was painful. Uh, there was no deformity and chest was non-tender, air entry bilaterally equal and normal vesicular breath sounds were heard everywhere. Per abdomen, it was soft, non-tender and pelvic compression test was negative and uh, all other four limb, uh, three limbs were uh, moving no there was no painful restrictions so initially we had managed with uh, analgesics and we had sent the patient for ct brain with facial cuts because he was having a left ear bleed and then uh, he was having the pain over the temporomandibular joint 
So CT brain with facial cuts was showing uh, condyles of both temporomandibular joint are fractured. Subluxation of the left temporomandibular joint with hematoma in the joint space. And hemat if, if you were to take a conventional radiograph, what would you consider? Uh, Panorex. Yeah, you can go for an OPG. If OPG is not available, you can consider a PA, a PA view. Yeah, PA view will give you a good idea about the condyles moving or condyle fracture. OPG is the best if you are going for a conventional. Uh, if OPG is also not available in your hospital, you can consider a PA cast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if there is uh, visibly there is any deformities over the uh, face uh, or else there is any uh, active bleeding from the oral oral cavity with the fracture any malocclusion of teeth uh, uh, what is this mandibular role for taking an x-ray of the mandibular region or a OPG so we need to look for the mouth opening any malocclusion of teeth any broken teeth any CT was also showing a hematoma seen involving both masseter, temporalis and lateral pterygoid and left preauricular region and malleus was normal. Uh, Incudostepidial joint is not clearly seen on left side which was obscured by soft tissue density at oval window, query hematoma. And x-ray of sho left, sh left shoulder was showing an inferior angle scapular fracture also. It was managed conservatively. CT didn't show condyle or any, anything regarding the condyle. Uh, condyle so temporomandibular joint. Both yeah. temporomandibular joint are fractured and with subluxation of the left temporomandibular joint with okay. hematoma in the joint space. Joint space, okay, fine. So, uh, patient was uh, admitted under uh, OMFS and then uh, they did a intermaxillary fixation and wound debridement of the chin. So, uh, the uh, CT revealed a high condylar head fracture. So, in such cases, you need not go for a surgical intervention. You can consider a conservative management. Uh, so, what we had decided, we had spoken to the patient. Uh, we told him that it, it is better to manage conservatively than a surgical. And we went ahead with something called as intermaxillary fixation. It involves a arch bar fixation where a bar is fixed around the teeth both in the upper and lower jaw and it is tied together in occlusion and it is left for at least two weeks. We send the patient, if the patient cannot uh, have fluids even then, uh, we suggest uh, RT to supplement his nutrition. Uh, yeah, after uh, IMF, we recall him and then we put him in elastics. We put, we place rubber bands around the uh, arch bar. So arch bar have, has hooks. So around these hooks, we place rubber bands and we try to guide the occlusion. So towards the end, our aim is to get a good occlusion for this patient. Considering it is a very, uh, it's like a very small fracture and it is, it does not cause a big deformity on the face. So that's why we went ahead with the conservative ma management. From a year point of view, what all will you be uh, assessing and how will you manage this patient? So, the patient had an uh, airway wise patient was otherwise, what would have been done? Uh, when the patient came with facial fractures, we the primary concern is with the airway. So, uh, initially, we have to see whether the patient is able to maintain the airway. A talking patient is supposed to uh, maintain his own her airway by its him on. Uh, so, uh, we had to look for uh, first the facial, in, def in, on inspection we had to see the uh, any deformities or any fractures, any uh, active bleeding sites uh, and uh, in airway we had to check whether any pooling of secretions, uh, any oral bleeding, uh, any uh, malocclusion, any tooth loss or uh, any obstructed teeth uh, and then uh, if there are, if there are teeth or anything we have to remove that, suction can be given. Uh, if the patient is not able to maintain the airway, uh, we will have to go for airway maintenance technique. So, 
airway might be compromised in other conditions also because of the edema or because of any other foreign bodies or because of other injuries like patient might have any uh, um, any ICP right. that can affect the TCS and that can affect the airway so that should be checked and also patient if there is any features of intoxication so we see lot of intoxicated mm. patients coming to ear so that also can uh, affect the GCS yes. thereby that will uh, affect the airway okay. so that also should be checked okay. I would one? like to add on airway so sometimes uh, there is bilateral symphysis fracture so when in such cases the whole chin goes behind and that also obstructs airway so that is a very tricky situation where you will have to pull the okay. segment forward and you will have to wire it around or you can just someone can just hold it and while the other one secures the uh, patent airway so that is something to note when you see mandibular fractures or a huge malocclusion you will have to bring the segments together so that will reduce bleeding to an extent also when you try to stabilize the uh, jaw when you try to stabilize the fractured segment we have to look for any um, any added sounds like any uh, uh, crepitus or any uh, uh, um, and then um, any neck swellings which may uh, um, uh, obscure the anatomy of the airway and then uh, oh, the airway okay so if at all the patient is having um, low GCS or anything that is affecting the airway how will you plan intubation for this patient uh, if the GCS is less than seven or eight, we can uh, uh, plan on uh, uh, intubation. Uh, and so, the patient is meeting the criteria. Uh, initially, we have to uh, for uh, airway ma maintenance techniques should be checked. If the, uh, we have to uh, do chin lift, uh, uh, face lift, everything after rolling out any C-spine injury. Mm -hmm. And and then only after if, if there is any after rolling out C-spine injuries. injuries. But if a patient is presenting to ER with a compromised airway, we don't have any radiographic proof right. that patient is having a normal C-spine. So definitely that should be secured. So only Man jaw thrust is our only, only way. Mm -hmm. But that too, if there is a fractured jaw, that also will get affected. Uh, any um, nasopharyngeal airway uh, can but be... But we didn't rule out any base of fracture. fracture. So airway, uh, if the patient is having low GCS, definitely he won't be able to tell for any C-spine injury. So two persons should be there at the airway side to assess the airway and for in intubation. Line. So uh, because if we will be doing an inline stabilization for intubation, especially in case of suspected C-spine fracture. Okay. So two persons should be there at the head end um, planning for airway and uh, <coughs> C-collar should be placed. That should be there. Then what else? What extra precautions you need to take? Uh, suction, mm, suction for any bleed or any, um, and then force of support to take any foreign bodies. Foreign body. yeah, uh, suction. Yeah, and then if there are tongue is tongue fall is there, we can just pull out the tongue and keep it in the way to uh, you know, so that we can uh, easily intubate. Um, and then. So uh, usually for intubation, we will be arranging the drugs and mm -hmm. also the equipment. Yes. Uh, here, what else we learned to arrange? If the intubation fails, what else we will be arranging? So, surgical uh, airway can yeah, surgical, surgical airway, airway should be considered because uh, we don't know whether we don't know what is inside uh, mm. happening. So, mm. if at all we are not able to uh, open the mouth and all, we will have to uh, definitely arrange for a uh, surgical, surgical airway. airway. That should be kept ready. Uh, that should be ready, and always uh, two persons should be there mm. during intubation. And if at all you are suspecting a difficult intubation, cannot intubate, cannot ventilate stage, the ideally do not paralyze the patient. Mm -hmm. So you can give an induction agent with an any analgesic mm -hmm. effect like a ketamine and all, and don't paralyze the patient uh, until and unless you feel that uh, it is an easy intubation. Because if the patient gets paralyzed, then there will not be any way to oxygenate or ventilate the patient. So. Um, in that and we don't have any other options so like nas uh, nasal uh, intubation and all cannot be done because there might be a suspected base of skull fracture we can do any video laryngoscope or any fiber optic intubations can be considered but this we need to keep in mind and two persons should be there okay then uh, regarding the uh, any 
uh, specific fractures coming to uh, mainly uh, first is frontal fracture we have to initially inspect for any uh, what is the most common face fracture which can come to nasal nasal septum fracture and then it is second is that uh, mandible fracture so uh, in uh, frontal fracture we should suspect i mean look for any uh, depression fractures and we suspect should any ic bleed and uh, then coming to orbital fracture the um, we have to look for the uh, blood fracture that is we have to look for the pupil for a tear drop sign and uh, any high femur in the eye uh, and then and coming to zygoma for the facial uh, while palpation we have to uh, palpate the zygoma also uh, for any tripod fracture tripod fracture is a disruption of the zygomatico frontal sutures zygomatico temporal tension and infraorbital rim and coming to uh, the mid facial fractures that is a leafward fractures leafward fracture is one is a transverse fracture separating the uh, mandible maxilla from the pterygoid plate and nasal septum and two is a pyramidal fracture uh, which is uh, central maxilla and hard palate and three is the craniofacial distinction uh, so in three and two two and three there will be any um, csf rhinorrhea we can expect uh, and then the mandible fractures like any uh, condyla fractures and the symphysis fractures we have so when you examine you start from head to uh, till the lower jaw. So you start with inspection, you check uh, facial asymmetry, you check for the lacerations, and then you go on to the palpation. So when you palpate, you should make sure you palpate the supraorbital rims. You can palpate the frontal bone from normal to abnormal. And then you can palpate the supraorbital rims on either sides so that you know it is symmetrical. Even the infraorbital rim, if there's an orbital flow fracture involving the infraorbital rim, you will definitely feel a step, a step. Okay, so then we suspect, okay, it could be an orbital floor fracture or a zygomatic complex fracture. So when you want to palp, uh, when you want to assess uh, leaf foot fractures also, you have to use, you have to do always bimanual. So you put, you place one, one, two, two fingers on your nasal bridge or on the nasal bone, and then you hold the maxilla and you try to move it. If there is movement, you can suspect, okay, fine. If there's only movement over here, it is leaf out one. If there's movement on both, like both your hands, then it could be leaf out two. So leaf out three means you assess the FZ also. Mm -hmm. Apart from this, you see FZ. If FZ is also, you can palpate some movement, that could, it could mean it's a leaf out three. Uh, so that's how you assess. You have to look orally also. You have to see if there are any signs. So we have various signs like if there is a hematoma in uh, the lingual aspect of the lower jaw, it is co called as Coleman sign. Then there is something called as Guerin sign, which is on the palate near the greater palatine foramen. If there is a clot over there, it's called as Guerin sign. So when you go, when you palpate, you always start from top to down, and once you reach the lower border, always palpate the lower, inferior border of the lower jaw. So if there is any step there, again, that could suggest some fracture. Or while inspecting, if you have seen some Coleman sign, some hematoma around the vestibule, it could also mean a fracture. Uh, malocclusion is very important. Missing teeth are also very important. When you see missing teeth, okay, there could be, you tend to suspect that there are fractures. So yeah, if you get your assessment right, you can diagnose also at the same time. Along with that, just uh, for the features of base of skull fracture, yeah. what are they? Uh, Baptist sign uh, around Baptist the sign. hematoma or the post auricular area and raccoon eyes. Raccoon eyes, then? Uh, CSF rhinorrhea. CSF rhinorrhea, CSF rhinorrhea. That is for the base of skull fracture. Look for the C-spin as we have already mentioned. Then, if at all the patient is having very low GCS and all, uh, and if you are suspecting any uh, um, tooth loss, broken teeth and all, and if you are not able to aspirate, always look for the X-ray to see if there is any teeth which has been aspirated or not. Yes. Uh, Avel's teeth, yeah, that is very important. Missing teeth is always to be noted. Mm -hmm. There are chances that patient could have aspirated. aspirated. And yes, like she mentioned, you should always take X-rays. Yes. Okay. Thank you.